a detailer's worst enemy, the dreaded minivan. <laughs> Why is it that I never seem to see a clean minivan? Well, we're about to change that. This is actually for my best friend. She's getting ready to go on a trip and who doesn't like having their vehicle cleaned before they go on a trip? So she brought her over here to my shop for me to be able to get her ready. So follow along for some tips and a satisfying transformation reveal. As far as minivans go, I'm not thinking this is gonna be too terribly bad. She does try to keep up with it, but for some reason minivans, they can just be a bear. Here's the real test. Oh, that's not bad. What I can appreciate about manufacturers for minivans is that they do put longer all weather mats on the interior. So really the, the biggest issue you gotta focus on is just these areas of the carpet that are unprotected. The carpet underneath typically is gonna be well preserved. So I'll share with you guys uh, products, tools to deep clean your mats. We're gonna just do a quick vacuum using a stiff brush or a drill brush to kind of agitate, bring up any loose dirt in our carpets. Our seats really we don't have, we have some minor spills you can just see they, they play sports, they have a puppy, they're in and out, maybe they're sweaty or, or wet from rain. So we're gonna go ahead, extract our seats now. But you can use pretty much any extractor. It's just really gonna depend upon how much time you spend cleaning the seats. I'll share with you guys some products and tips on how to clean your upholstery as well as your carpets. You can use the same kind of methodology for mats if you have uh, carpeted mats but we'll share with you guys just some quick ways to clean your plastics some of the tools and products that I use to get professional results a lot of times with minivans your dirtiest areas are going to be your cup holders because that's just where everything lands maybe we'll throw in a little bit of an exterior detail for my friend so you know why Normally, I don't know about you guys, I hate doing minivans. They're my least favorite vehicle to work on because they are just nasty. This one actually, it's not that bad. So, put her in park. We're gonna pull out all of the mats, all of the personal items, just get everything kind of gutted. A lot of times with detailing, you have to just kind of strip everything out to be able to work more effectively. So, if you are just like a mom or dad, you may not actually know how much stuff is in your van. So kind of compile your trash piles, your put back in the, the van piles. This is just a great time to just kind of purge, reorganize. And then when you put everything back in, it can be nice and neat and organized at least for five minutes before the kids get back in. So let's get to work. So one of many reasons why I do not like working on minivans is because I normally will remove the middle seat so that I can work on the interior more comfortably. I'm pretty tall, I'm almost six feet tall, and this seat just did not want to budge. I think at some point I may have actually laid hands on it. <laughs> I did pray, and I had to Google some things or watch a YouTube video because I could not figure out how to get the seat out. Finally, I was able to get all of the seats out, but there were a couple swear words and then definitely some hallelujahs once I got that seat out. Oh yeah, and don't forget the door cup holders. They're always the worst. We see you kids, we see you. Now that we have our mats out, you can see that our carpets really don't need a whole lot of work thanks to the beauty of the weather mats. They do a great job of just kind of protecting your carpet. So now all we really need to focus on is just these perimeter areas. You don't necessarily have to do this every time if you're just kind of maintaining, but you can see just how much dirt is in these seat tracks. These are different seat tracks. This is a newer Odyssey. So you can see we actually can slide this all the way over. So we'll clean this area here in our seat tracks. Now, some people actually tackle this with steam. There is actually grease within these seat tracks. So we're actually gonna use forced air or a vacuum and a detail brush crevice attachment to suck up as much of this as possible. I don't like blowing a lot of liquid within the seat tracks just because I don't want to remove that grease that's within here because it's going to make it really difficult for the seat to slide back and forth. But you definitely want to clean it because all that dirt 
and crumbs, if they build up, it's just gonna gum it up and then you're not even gonna be able to slide your seeds, period. So let me go ahead, get set up. We'll get to work and I'll explain to you guys why I do what I do. We're using the five horsepower rigid vacuum. It's small, compact, perfect for not taking up a lot of space in your garage, but very powerful for its size. I'm also gonna be using the mini car dryer from Aki 37. This is their variable speed. I'm using this in place of a compressor and a tornador gun. What I like about this, if I want a little bit of air, I want a lot of air. This thing packs a big punch in a little size, but it doesn't have to be full blown air every time. I just want a gentle, quick breeze. It's perfect. We are gonna have a light source just to help me see under the seats and things like that. Again, I could be working outside, but for those of you that maybe it's too cold to detail outside in the winter time, uh, light bars and lights like this are gonna come in real handy with being able to see dirt. You can't clean it if you can't see it. And as far as our agitation, we've got various brushes. We're gonna be using our work stuff, our natural brush to dust everything. If we have sensitive finishes like our LCD displays, or if you have any sort of piano trim on the interior, the ultra soft brushes are going to be safe, but help dust without any sort of scratching. If we have tighter spaces, sticky dirt, on our carpets. This is a stiff detailing brush that we can use to kind of get in those tighter spaces. If you have pet hair, you can use a pet hair brush like this. It's perfect for getting up against your plastics, but it's not going to damage it. And then we have our drill brush. Now you don't need this. You could use something like this. It's just going to take a lot longer. This is going to speed up the process a whole lot. When it comes to our vacuum step for all of our dry dirt, we're going to be using our cone head. I have a long attachment here. Does a great job of just very quickly getting up all the dirt, agitating it from the carpet, lifting it so that way I can come in and vacuum and not have to be dealing with a lot of that deeper embedded dirt, pine, needles, grass, etc. And then when it comes to extracting step, you want a brush like this. It's gonna keep your liquid down instead of flinging it everywhere. So you do want two different size heads. I use these on every single detail. I'll put the link for them down below. These are what I would consider an essential tool for detailing if you want to get professional results having some sort of drill and then drill brushes i like the extension head it lets me get into places that i typically wouldn't if i just had kind of a standard tip on here so i'll put the link to all of these tools down below as far as for our prep step let's go ahead and get this vacuumed because minivans are notorious for having so many nooks and crannies, we're gonna use our blower to help blow out those tight spaces where we may not be able to access with our vacuum attachment. Because of that reason, we're gonna start in the very back actually and work our way forward so that as we're using the blower, it's gonna push all the dirt forward. That's just gonna give us a little bit more of an efficient process, but whenever you're vacuuming a minivan, just be prepared. There will be a lot of back and forth because you're just going to discover more and more crumbs in these nooks and crannies. So just be patient. Know that this step, it's the longest step. It will take time, but it will yield the best results if you do it the right way. We're actually using our drill brush to agitate the carpet. That really just helps fluff them. So that way, when we do extract, I have removed all of the loose soiling from the carpets and anything that I'm extracting at that point is just kind of mud or any sort of stains. Alongside of our drill brushes, make sure you're utilizing those detailing brushes as you are vacuuming to go over all of your plastic surfaces and along your tighter spaces. So that way, when it comes time to clean our plastics, all we have to do is simply wipe and we don't have to spend near as much time on that step. And for alongside your seats, don't forget to use your blower to blow out all the crumbs. Use your long crevice attachment to vacuum alongside your seats. And that's gonna really give you nice fine-tuned results. You'd be surprised how much stuff you can find alongside your seats. This is the area that probably required the most amount of time when vacuuming this interior out. We just kept sliding these seat tracks back and forth and just discovering more and more dirt underneath of them. It wouldn't be a minivan if we didn't have our token French fries. And this is why having a blower helps because I thought everything was done with our vacuum alone and we just discovered a bunch more stuff. 
and that could eventually affect your track. I honestly use this more on interiors than I do exteriors. You can always blow out everything before you even start vacuuming, but because there were so many crumbs and I didn't want to be in a sandstorm, we're kind of doing it as we go, but it might be more efficient to blow everything out first. Woo, okay. There's nothing worse when you're all done with the detail and you put the seats back in and you slide them into position and things just continue to keep falling out of the seats and so I swear one of the best investments I ever made. We pretty much pushed all the dirt to our driver's seat. We're going to do this side, do the same thing and then we are ready to vacuum our front and then we're done with the vacuum step. Really that's the bulk of the work, the, the biggest amount of work that you're going to have to do. From here we'll shampoo our seats, wipe down our plastics, forgot about the side doors. I always forget about the side door stuff. So. That was a lot of prep. <laughs> Good thing I did it now though, and not later. So after repeating that same exact process for vacuuming on the front section, now let's move on to extracting our seats. They really are not in bad condition. There were only a couple seats that we needed to do the bottoms and the backs. So majority of them, we could just get by with cleaning the seats only. We're using Koshemi, their Polestar cleaner, as well as Ulex for a couple areas where maybe we have some ink stains or sticky residue that we need to go a little bit more aggressive with our cleaning methods. Ulex is a great spot cleaner in instances where you have some heavier stains. And Polestar is a pH neutral cleaner that is low foaming. So what that means is you're not going to have to spend as much time rinsing away the residue, which means your seats will dry faster. We did have some wicking that we had to deal with after we extracted, so we're using Spot Stop to go after any wicking stains. It does a really nice job if you have any sort of tannin stains that after you've extracted everything, if you see any sort of brown rise to the surface, that Spot Stop is going to just be a quick solution on being able to remove that browning. I'll share with you guys how I use that in just a second. But we're just using my Aqua Provac, which is a cold water extractor. We could even use something like a Bissell Spot Pro but ultimately the seats came up really nice. There were a couple of spots that we had some heavier staining, but all in all, they turned out really nice. Because we had all weather mats, we didn't have to extract any of our mats and our carpets actually cleaned up really nice during our vacuum step, but you would basically do the same process on your carpets if you had any sort of heavy soiling. Spray with your cleaner, agitate with your drill brush, extract, and then let blow dry. For those detailers that are looking for a really great blower, this is the Dry Pod from Dry Ease. This is my favorite blower. This will accelerate dry time by hours. These seats weren't very dirty, but because we had enough spots on them that I didn't want to deal with an inconsistent appearance, we extracted. So now we're actually gonna turn the vehicle on and turn our heat on full blast. Make sure you have enough gas to be able to do this and make sure the customer is okay with you running the vehicle for probably 30 minutes to an hour max. But this is a quick way to dry our seats. All we've done at this point is an extremely thorough vacuum with our detail brushes. We've extracted our seats, but you can see just by doing these simple steps, we've made a huge improvement. So while everything is drying out, we're gonna move on to our weather mats. One of my favorite ways to clean all weather mats is using McKees 37, their floor mat and cargo liner rejuvenator. You can use your pressure washer, and this is where we're gonna use that drill brush, our solution. And this does a really nice job of cleaning any sort of browning and dirt off of your mats. And it's gonna actually leave it with almost a renewed and restored black finish. Especially if you have weather mats like this, this is the best cleaner I have found to give them that like new black appearance without using any sort of slippery dressing. So our seats are pretty much dry on the interior, but we do have one spot right here. And this is what can happen sometimes as seats dry or upholstery dries, any deeper stains that as 
water and everything dries, it's just gonna kind of lift the stain back up to the surface. So you saw me using this earlier, but this is Spot Stop. This is a product that helps with wicking. So what we're gonna do, just gonna kind of gently spray this on and work it in. And this is actually kind of like an acid rinse. And it's also just going to help go against uh, some of those tannin stains that are more than likely the culprit of the wicking. Could be coffee, tea, something like that. Knowing my friend, it's not coffee. She's not a big coffee drinker. So this seat, we got that one stain out. These seats, everything looks dry, nice and even. It doesn't mean you did a bad job when it comes to extracting. It is a very common problem. Our back seats here look good. I think we have a little bit right there. When I went over that with my drill brush, it was actually brown. So whatever was spilled back here, we had some wicking with that. So we're gonna do the same thing back here. And hopefully when everything dries, you might have to do one or two rounds sometimes if it's really bad. That's why we just did the bottoms of the seats because those were really where the staining was. The backs, I didn't see any sort of stains. So we'll keep our eye on this spot here and this spot here as the interior continues to dry out. But for the most part, everything is cleaning up nice. So we're gonna keep moving on this outside. We've already spent a few hours on the interior. So I'm looking for products that are gonna perform quickly for the exterior. We're gonna use Vonix Citron. This is actually a high alkaline degreasing soap. This vehicle actually is a pearl white, but it almost has like a yellowish hue to it just because of the amount of road film and dirt that's on the exterior. It's been a couple weeks since she washed it. So first up, we need to do our tires and wheels and wheel wells, as well as our door jams. Get those cleaned and out of the way, and then we can focus on our paint. For our tires and wheels, we're using two of my favorites lately, Shine Supply Wise Guy for our tires and Purist Wheel Cleaner and Iron Remover. Both do an excellent job at deep cleaning your tires and wheels quickly, making a very annoying task actually enjoyable. And to quickly clean all of our door jams and door tracks, we're using our pressure washer along with Superior Products Dark Fury. Oftentimes I get asked by my customers, how can I make the wash process safer and easier? Using a pressure washer is a great tool to use to be able to blast off a lot of the dirt, but you can see by itself, it didn't do a great job at removing all of the road film and dirt. But when we used a foam cannon and our Vonix Citron alkaline degreasing soap, after coming in with our pressure washer again, we're very easily able to remove a lot of the road film and dirt that's stuck on the paint. And what that's going to do is actually make your wash step a lot safer because when you come in to do your contact wash, now you've removed a majority of the dirt that was kind of stuck on there like glue. If you were to have actually come in there with your wash mitt before doing this step, Essentially, you're taking all of that little microscopic dirt and dust that's still stuck on there and just rubbing it in and essentially scratching your paint. And so using a foaming pre-soap like this is a great way to give you a safer wash method, but it's also going to make it a lot faster and more thorough. Notice just the visible difference before I've even touched the paint. So after doing our contact wash and a quick clay towel treatment, we're gonna rinse our vehicle and apply our protection. This is Vonix Spell, a three to four month sealant that you actually apply to the vehicle while it is still wet. Spray thoroughly, then rinse off. Ooh, that sounds yummy. You can already see where it's actually bleeding. Panel. 
already. Our product is like beating up. Most spray and rinse products you have to rinse off immediately or you're going to have issues with spotting. But they actually say with this product that you can let it sit on to up to a maximum of a quarter of the vehicle before you have to come in and rinse off. So you don't have to be stressed or really rushed through this process, but it does make the protection step a whole lot faster. For those that don't have a lot of time to wash or protect their vehicle, it doesn't get much easier than this. Use it on your paint, glass, even your wheels. It took a total of five minutes for us to apply a spell to the entire vehicle. So now let's pull it into the garage, dry everything off. We're going to fine tune our door jams with waterless wash from Puris. And on our interior, because we've already cleaned everything during our vacuum step with our detail brush, we're going to use Shine Supply Sanitary Cleaner as well as Stoner Car Care Invisible Glass. Especially on minivans, these are two of my favorite products to just dial in all of our interior surfaces and kind of reset some of the germ levels as well that are especially in the back seat area. And this is where we really dial in the details using our blower, cleaner, and detail brushes to fine tune clean all of those nooks and crannies, vents, cup holders, and leave behind a like new appearance. So we are finally all done with our minivan detail. It took several hours, but this baby is ready to hit the road for her trip. I know she won't look this good when she comes back, but at least we've been able to reset things on the interior and exterior and make it a lot easier for her to maintain moving forward. And that's the beauty of a good detail. Minivans are normally the longest detailed for me here at my shop. This one wasn't too bad, but I always tell my customers, consistency is key. The more frequently you can maintain your vehicle, the better results you'll be able to get, and a lot of times you don't have to spend as much time to get them if you keep up with your vehicle. All right guys, that's a wrap. We are all done with this minivan detail. From start to finish, I've been able to show you guys my process and how I would handle a project of this scale. This is actually really good in comparison to a lot of the minivans that I see on a day-to-day -day basis, but it took quite a bit of time. It's actually around 5.30 at night. We started around 11 o'clock today just because I'm letting things warm up as we're in winter time. So it wasn't necessarily a three, four hour job. I took my time. We had a lot of videoing and editing that we had to do, but all in all, really happy with how all of the products that we use performed. For those of you that want to try any of them out for yourself, in the video description box down below, I will put my affiliate links for any of those products. And anytime you guys purchase anything using my affiliate links, that just helps support this channel with a small commission. So thank you guys for your continued support. I really appreciate Let it. Let me know in the comment section down below, do you guys enjoy content like this, where it's just kind of the entire process before and after? Let me know, comment down below if you guys want to see more content like this. But Anyways, we're done for the night. I'm going to head into dinner with my family, but thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for future videos that we have coming out. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next detail.